The five-man unit of Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso, and Nikola Vucevic were limited to just 16 games together last season and were a plus 12.5 per 100 possessions. The Bulls went 11-5 in that stretch, a 56-win pace. And in all of those games, either Kobe White or Patrick Williams were missing due to injury. The paw Patty Williams came back and played exceptional in his playoff debut, scoring at least 20 points in games 4 and 5 against Milwaukee. Even better, Pat looks much improved in 2022's offseason as from the tape, you can see the product of Florida State's handle is looking deadly. Last season in 2021-22, the at one point number one seeded Bulls, who were dominating the Eastern Conference behind a stable defense, had a mid-season collapse. What was at one point seeming like the franchise's first chip since the Michael Jordan era spiraled into a miserable second half of the season, where players suffering major injuries felt predictable. Zach Levine missed a large chunk of the season due to a left knee injury, but fought through it to play in the postseason. The team's two primary ball handlers, two of the most crucial defensive players in Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball, would end up missing a combined 92 games, along with Patrick Williams, Another top wing defender in Derek Jones Jr. missed a massive portion of the season. Getting all these pieces back makes the 2022-23 Chicago Bulls look salvageable. Stay tuned to see exactly why that's the case for the six-time NBA champions. Before continuing, just 8.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference and click the link in the description to go follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. The 2022 Chicago Bulls reached their peak when DeMar DeRozan became the first player of all time to hit game-winning buzzer-beating jump shots on back-to-back -back days against the Indiana Pacers and Washington Wizards. At that point, Chicago had won 25 games and lost 10, and sat two games above the second-place Brooklyn Nets for the first seed in the Eastern Conference. After DeRozan's daggers, Chicago would hold control for another 18 days until the Nets overtook them on January 20th. The Bulls regained control of the East in an early February six-game winning streak, but couldn't hold off another slump, and this time, with Lonzo Ball, Derek Jones Jr., and Patty Williams all out indefinitely, plus Caruso and Levine being banged up and in and out of the lineup as well, this Chicago slump wasn't short-lived like the one after DeMar's bit of history. After starting the season 33-19, becoming my channel's main topic, the injury bug became just too much for the Bulls to hold teams in front of them. Lonzo Ball's absence took the biggest toll on Chicago, as without Zoe, the Bulls' defensive efficiency ranked dead last among all teams. On the other hand, when Ball was healthy, the Bulls had the ninth best defense in the association. Chicago's 110.5 mark in this advanced stat when Ball was on the court put them within less than two points of any team ranked in the top eight in defensive efficiency other than the Golden State Warriors, Boston Celtics, and Phoenix Suns. That proves to you Lonzo's overwhelming for a point guard, six foot nine inch wingspan, his reactions in the passing lanes, clamping on ball pressure, lateral quickness, communication, and extremely high IQ puts the Bulls' defense next to the very best in the association. Along with the advanced stat I mentioned to open this video about Chicago's starting five, here's another fact that speaks volumes to how good this team is at 100%. When the Bulls' 28-point-per-game score last season in DeMar DeRozan has two top-of-the-league backcourt stoppers in both Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso next to him on the court, the Bulls had a record of 17 wins and 7 losses. With their three primary backcourt players healthy, those games saw the Bulls post the best defensive rating and the second best offensive rating across the NBA. However, when all three of DeRozan, Ball, and Caruso didn't suit up, Chicago's record plummeted to 26 wins and 24 losses. What makes Chicago so difficult to play offense against is the Lockdown Brothers. Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball are the two best guard defenders in the NBA that have never made an all-defensive team. Alex Caruso doubles the intensity provided by Lonzo, as the Bald Mamba's constant movement, strength, and lateral footwork make it energy-draining for opposing guards to penetrate the lane in one-on-ones. Caruso's impact doesn't stop when he's the helper in pick-and-rolls, as he's got the ability to dominantly hedge and recover. 
When he's guarding the primary ball handler in screen and rolls, AC has consistently shown off excellent persistence and communication with his big man. This allowed the Caruso to swipe a career-high six steals against the Dallas Mavericks, and on the 21-22 season overall, average a career-high 1.7 steals per night. A shocking stat from these past playoffs comes in the charges drawn department. Despite Caruso and more surprisingly his offensive base teammate DeRozan having played 12 less games than anyone ahead of them, Alex and DeMar were tied for the fourth most charges taken of any other player, laying their body out on the line four times. This shows you that despite DeRozan being known as a below average defender, he's more than willing to lay everything out there on this end of the court. You can't forget about the offense that the Bulls missed when Lonzo and Alex both missed at least half of the 82 game season, as Ball and Caruso combined to average 9.1 assists per game. Lonzo shot 42.3% on 7.43 point attempts per game before he went down permanently. Caruso's volume and efficiency was much lower at 33% on three deep range bombs each night, but the floor spacing and playmaking from the Bulls' two point guards was something they couldn't live without. The fourth overall pick from 2020's NBA draft in Patrick Williams is another player whose absence was felt significantly. He missed all but 17 games in the 21-22 season, but a campaign before that as a rookie, Patrick's 111.7 defensive rating mark would have ranked him number six among all small forwards in that area. Off-season workouts display that Patrick's been putting in the reps improving his handle off the bounce, and more notably, his shooting off the dribble. The man looks like a completely different player, but then again, we need to see if this translates to the highest level before overreacting. But at the highest level last season, albeit in limited time, Patrick made 52% of his three-point shots, improving on the solid 39% deep range percentage he posted over 71 games as a rook. However, the first round against Milwaukee was where Pat really shined. After returning late in the season from his injured wrist, Williams was in rhythm come the playoffs and gained experience guarding Giannis Adetokounmpo over a five-game tilt. Despite matching up with the Greek Freak, Patrick still had the energy to be a real factor for Chicago in terms of putting the ball in the bucket. The 20-year-old showed up with 12-point-per-game averages on 57% true shooting in the Milwaukee series, pretty good for a sophomore, but more notably, Pat scored 20 in Game 4 and 23 in Game 5, making a combined seven three-pointers. On plays like the one on your screen where the Bulls' phenom gains obscene downhill momentum on a line drive, you get the full idea of how special a player the Bulls' rising wing can develop into. Who's your player comparison for Patrick Williams? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout and the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, was Stephen A right to call out Kaminga? Michael Mattioli gets the shout out for saying SAS is a bloviating windbag. JK is going to average 15, 6, 3, 2. You don't want to see him after another year playing 20 minutes a game. He's 19 years old, making 6 million a year from one of the poorest countries on the planet.